So day three is multiplying polynomials. What we're going to do is we're going to follow these steps and we're going to draw algebraic diagrams. And then later what we'll do is we'll just do like the area diagrams like I got on the whiteboard there. So what we need to do is we have to put the terms just like we did with the whiteboard. See these two factors are a length and a width. We're going to do the same thing with these two factors. They're a length and a width. So this is a length and this is the width and you're timesing them. So you can put x like this. That's an x. And then how do you put x plus 3 along the width? And then the three little guys. Now when you go to do this multiplication, you have to go like column by row, column by row, just like in your elementary grades. This, this case there's only one, one column. So what's a bar times a bar? That makes your square. And then bar times unit gives you the, the bar. I just color them because they're positive. So what am I left on the inside? There's an x squared plus 3x. Now just take a look what would happen if you multiplied this in just using the symbols. x times x is, and then x times 3 is 3x. Now here's the key understanding that you have to, un have to visualize. This right here is the area. Do you agree that that's the area of a rectangle? This makes the shape of a rectangle. Over here is the factors for that area. The area is the same no matter which way you look at it, whether it's factored as a length and a width, or if it's an expression written as a sum. This is a sum. This is a product. The goal for factoring is to take the sum to the product. That's the goal of factoring. And if you go from the product to the sum, that's expanding. And I do not expect you guys to do algebra tiles for your life in math. But the algebra tiles just demonstrate, you know, why it works this way. It's the understanding. Okay? Like I think we'll do maybe one more. I don't think we need to spend too much time on these algebra tile diagrams. Like, let's do the third one. X minus 1. So there's a solid bar for X. And then minus 1 has a hollow or unshaded unit. Now, negative 2Xs, how many would that be? Two hollow bars. Now a bar times a bar makes a, makes a square, okay? So just think back to like those base 10 blocks. 10 times 10 is 100. A bar times a bar is a flat. Do you remember that? 10 times 10 is 100. A bar times a bar is a flat. And then if they're alternate shading and, and unshaded, then they're left unshaded. So that's the first column times each row. And now you have to do the second column times each row. What's going to happen to these ones? Uh, unshaded and unshaded becomes shaded.
Now if you count those up on the inside, you have how many squares? Two of them and they are negative. Then how many bars do you have? Two of them and they're positive. Okay. What if we just did it how I want you to do it? <laughs> what if we just times this guy in here? Like this. Would you get the same thing? On the first one, you have a negative times a negative. That's your 2x, positive. And on the second expansion, you get the negative 2x squared here. Okay, so it's the same thing. You guys okay with this? You ready to move on? Just do it symbolically without the pictures. That's the goal. Okay, let's try a couple of these ones that are already done for us. This is x negative. Do you agree? This is negative x and uh, what's this one? A positive unit. So you have a negative x multiplied by a negative x plus 1. Distributing in, that's what this is called, distribution. I'll do it one at a time. Negative x times negative x positive x squared, and then negative x times 1, negative x. And you would get that by timesing the column by the rows, negative times a negative, negative times a positive. That's this. Okay, why don't you guys try to fill those last two. I'll walk around and help. Okay, I'm just going to quickly put these solutions up so you can match your work with mine. All right, so we had a negative x plus 2, and that's multiplying a positive 2x. You get negative 2x squared plus 4x. Just confirm you also got that. Make any adjustments that you need to make. The other one is a positive x and a negative x and a positive 2. You should get a negative x squared plus a 2x. All right, so you should have a negative square. Oops, my bad. And then two positive uh, rods. Okay, I'll leave that up for a few seconds so you can just double check your work. And again, these uh, polynomial diagrams are f completely for understanding. I wouldn't recommend using them in like a test situation where you have time constraints. And like, uh, we don't have these specifically on our exams, so like you don't have to, you don't have to demonstrate use of these tiles. Okay, I mean you could use it but we don't mand mandate it. All right, so what we've been doing is essentially this distributive property. I really love this, uh, the way these notes have it put. Like, depending on the sign, whether it's plus or minus, the A is going to multiply in, and it's going to essentially attach weight to each one of these terms. This is called distribution. You've seen this a number of times. And it doesn't matter if A is on the front or A is on the back. It's the same thing. Now, typically, typically it's done like this. The number that you're going to distribute in is starts on the left. So here we go. 4 times 2x. 8x. Very nice. And 4 times 3, 12. This is expanding. So sometimes kids get, they know what they're doing, but like on a test, sometimes they get mixed up with some of the vocabulary that's used. So this is expansion when you distribute. Distribute and expand, same idea.
And then what does it mean to simplify? This is going to mean collect any like terms that might be there. Collect any like terms. In our case, there wasn't any there. Collecting any like terms. Okay, I'll do the second one. Pardon me, the third one. So I'll just think of the number only 9 times 8. If you've got to go to your calculator th for that, that's all good. But 9 times 8 is. And then the x squared times x. x cubed. Because you began with 2. You attached one more. 3 terms of x. x cubed. Now 9 times 5 is 45. A positive times a negative is a negative. And there's no x to attach, so x squared just goes with it. The x squared just stays the same. Any like terms there? No. You guys can try the two in between. Does anybody want to contribute some answers here? Anybody want to give it a go? Don't be afraid. Go for it. The second one here, yeah. Very nice. You know, the key part on this one, it's not too tough of a question, but she nailed the only part that possibly could screw you up is the sign. You got a negative times a positive, and then a negative times a negative. Okay? Someone try the last one for me. Very nice. Very nice. So it's a negative being distributed into two positives. So both of those are going to end up negative. Now I want you to imagine if this was a factoring question and I, I gave you the blue ink and you had to factor. What happens when you factor out a negative like negative 4? Both of the terms left over become So I want you to try to imagine both processes. We did the expansion today, it going in. But the past couple days we've been doing factoring where we bring it out. So if I let you start with blue and I said take out the greatest common factor, what's the biggest number that divides 8 and 12? And how many x's are shared between x4 and x3? So you could take out a 4x cubed, right? And then what they did is, maybe you want to factor out a negative. If you factor out a negative 4 instead of a positive 4, the two terms left over will be positive. See how they're negative in here? If you factor out a negative, the two left over will become positive. All right, let's do some of these harder ones. This is where we'll have to do some collection of like terms. So pop the 3 in there. I got a 6x and a minus 15. Notice how I no longer have any more brackets. Now pop the 7 in there. It's a positive 7. Positive 7 times x, positive 7 times 2. Now collecting like terms, 6 and 7 makes 13. And negative 15 plus 14 leaves minus 1. I'm going to put a little note there because for some reason students kind of get messed up with brackets so I'll put this note here. Expanding removes the brackets. Expanding removes the brackets. And this step here was collect like terms. So give the second one a shot. Distribute both, collect like terms. Okay, let's see how you guys did. 
Can someone help me with the first expansion? Louder? Negative 12x plus 32. Very nice. Sorry? 18x, yeah, I agree. And then, very good. How many x's altogether? Six of them? 18 take away 12? And then 32 take away 6? Say what? 26, thank you. I'm. Oh, I like this one. You guys know why I like this one? That's the sixth month. That's the month I was born. And that's my birth date. Hey. I like this one. This one's nice. Now you know my birthday. Now you know you can get me a coffee, Tim's car. That's yeah, during finals. My brother was born in the start of September, so every year I got my birthday like when school is ending, and he has birthday when school is starting. So his whole life he's jaded. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to go inside, underneath this time for some reason. I don't know. Mix it up. And then... That's too bad. That's too bad, right? Now, when you're thinking about your integer operations, what happens when you add two positives? It becomes more positive. What happens when you add two negatives? It becomes more... Here, I'll, I'll give you an example for physics. I'll give you an example for physics. Okay, let's say you start... This is your starting place, the origin. What happens if you walk uh, five meters east and then you uh, walk six meters east? Where do you end up? You would end up 11 meters east, right? Okay, well, what if I did this? Five meters west plus six meters west. What would that be? 11 meters west, right? You walked six meters west, and then you walk five meters west, you end up 11 meters west. So, in f so you could think of this as like, for the east, it would be like a positive five plus a positive 6. A positive 5 and a positive 6 makes a positive 11. But going the other way, you'd have a negative 5 plus a negative 6, and altogether you have negative 11. So when you add two negatives, they, they work together in the negative direction, right? So like a negative 20 and a negative 2, they work together for a negative 22. And a negative 15 and a negative 16 work together for a negative 31. It's only when they work against each other when you have issues. Like what if you go, what if you go 5 meters east and 6 meters west? 5 meters, ah, uh, I always get those mixed up. 6 meters west, and then you go 5 meters east. Where'd you end up? You're still one meter over, so they work against each other. So it'd be like a positive five plus a negative six. Now they work against each other. So you think of it that way. Instead of trying to remember like these these rules, try to just actually conceptualize what's happening. Minus twenty-two x minus thirty-one. Is that right? Okay, let's move on. In it goes, minus 4x and minus 8. This one goes in, and plus 20. And plus 20. 
And if you're no good at those integer operations and you just you just know that, like, don't be afraid to pop it in the calculator. But the one thing I'll hesitate is that, you know, if you spend a lot of your time just clicking during the test instead of thinking, you can kind of waste some time, some precious time. Okay, so now we're going to do the uh, binomial binomial. These ones are the ones that really we have to focus on in this Math 10C. These ones are the ones that gives us the most grief. I'm only going to do one of them by algetile, and then I'll do the other ones just by, by area. They're essentially the same thing, but I'll just show it a little bit differently. So here's the first one. And we talked about these at the start of the class, so we, you can refer to the whiteboard if you're forgetting what's going on. There's the x plus 3. There's the x plus 2. It can get a little bit annoying to draw these over and over. Okay, so I'm going to do the first expansion, which would be x times x. That's this. I'll use my pointer. That's this times this. So it's first column times first row. And an x times x gives you a x bar. Or pardon me, an x square. Two x bars make an x square. x times x, x squared. Now for the next one, x times 2. So which one is that? x times 2. That's this x times these two. Look at my board. This x times these two. So it's still the first column, but now we've got to multiply by the second row. So x, th x times 2 would be 2x. Now we move on to the second part of the expansion, which would be multiplying the 3 onto both. So 3 times x, where's that one? These 3 times this x. I'll s look at the board if you missed that. These 3 times this x. So now we're into the second column times the first row, and we draw them vertically this time so that it makes this perfect rectangle. And now finally we finish it off with a 3 times 2. That's second column, second row. These 3 times this 2. That's like back in elementary school. 3 times 2 gives 6 units. 3 units times 2 units gives 6 units. Now, if I was you, I'd switch color, and I'd look at this area, and I would just count them up. How many x squares you got? One x square. How many x's? Five x's, and how many units? Six. And now, that's it. Again, just so you see it one more time, this is a sum. This is a product. Remember, length multiplied by width gives area. From the product to the sum, that's expanding. And from the sum to the product, that's factoring. Because what I could say is I could start you with this thing in green here. I could say x squared plus 5x plus 6 is a polynomial. Factor it. And you'd have to come up with x plus 3 and x plus 2. So I wonder why it's 3 and 2. What's special about 3 and 2? They add up to and multiply to. Hopefully you guys are starting to see that pattern now. 
Okay, now we're going to do it without the algebra tiles. Here's x, here's plus 2. Two columns. Here's x, here's minus 4. Two rows. It's the exact same thing, but you don't have to draw the stupid shapes. x times x. x times negative 4. x times 2. And 2 times negative 4. I'm going to go through that one more time with my pointer, just in case you missed it. Start on the first column, and each column goes row by row. x times x, x times negative 4. That fills these columns. Jump to the second column and go row by row. And it fills these. Now when you look at this, do you see any like terms? These ones are like terms, right? So what will you have to do with like terms? Put them together. So th the answer to the second one is x squared. The two in the yellow make negative 2x. And the last one is minus 8. So that's the second expansion. Now look for the pattern. What's positive 2 plus minus 4? Negative 2. And what's positive 2 times negative 4? Negative 8. Good. Okay, let's do the next one. We have an x and a minus 1. We have an x and a plus 2. Make a box. What's the first one? x times x? x squared. What's the next one? x times 2? Two? 2x. Two now do the next one. Minus 1 times x? And minus 1 times 2. Collect like terms. x squared. What's 2x minus x? x. That one's done. Pretty quick, eh? Okay, you guys got the last one. Okay, looks like people are getting this done pretty quick. That looks good. x times x, x times negative 2, negative x, positive 2. This is the last one. Putting it all together, I got an x squared minus a 3x and a plus 2. There's the last one. Now, just before we move on, because this is like monumentally important, and it's I'm just hinting at it today, just quickly, guys. You see these two factors? You see these length and width factors? Take these numbers, minus 1 and minus 2, what do they add up to? Negative 3, and what do they multiply to? Positive 2. That's a pattern that you're going to have to be able to spot later. All right, these algebra tile diagrams are optional for you at the bottom. You can do them if you wish. And now we're going to do some of this distribution. The way that the notes have it put is a very formal way of showing binomial, binomial distribution. Binomial multiplied by binomial. Uh, 
I'll use my highlighter. Use a better color than yellow. This A, it has to be multiplied by both those terms. That's this. But you can't forget that this B also has to get multiplied by this term. And that's this. The way that a lot of high schools in Alberta teach this is through the FOIL acronym. The FOIL acronym again is first, outer, inner, last. It's a good uh, tool for memorizing, uh, but it's important that you understand that when you multiply this, it's essentially a rectangle that is being produced because it's just multiplication, just like you're back in elementary school doing some of the uh, different strategies you might have been taught. So x by x, that's like first column, first row. And then x by 5, that's like first column, second row. Now into the second column, first row. And second column, second row and then you collect like terms in the middle. 5x and 2x makes 7x. Now, again, just one more time. Some of you are spotting the patterns. You always have an x squared term. 2 plus 5 is 7, and 2 times 5 is, is 10. So I bet some of you could do the next one without even thinking. You'd be like, okay, minus 4 and minus 3, that's minus x, mi this one's done. Because you can spot patterns. Minus 4 mi plus 3, minus 1. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12. Now, I would say that you should probably, especially at the beginning of this, you should be doing this longhand. Now the way that these notes are set up, it looks like they want me to do the distributive property the way that they have it above. So I'll do it just one time for you guys on this, this last column. I'll go, okay, this x needs to get multiplied by all that. So you have x times x minus 6. And this minus 1 needs to get multiplied by all that. So you have a minus 1 times x minus 6. And then they come in. x squared minus 6x. They come in. And you essentially arrive at the same scenario. I would recommend that you just do it the way you're comfortable with. You could see right off the hop, I was just doing it foil. Because when I was taught it as a youngster, it was foil, 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 foil. Like, I, I never do this. My personal, I know it's true, but I never do it. I just do it my foil way. So, lots of times in math, you're given lots of different strategies. I would say pick one that works for you. So, I would say finish off this page. There's four at the, one left in the top and four at the bottom. Let's finish those off. So as you're working, I'll just quietly put the key up for the bottom four, and you can check your work. Okay, key going up. Okay, let's double check your work. I think that's right. Anybody agree, disagree? Uh oh, nine times three is apparently eighteen. Wow. Better? You guys good on this? Okay, now for the hard part. This page right here.
this next page. We're going to be factoring trinomials. Trinomials have three terms. These trinomials are going to come in the form x squared and then x and then constant. Okay, this is a degree two term. This is a degree one term. This is a degree zero term. They go in that order. Sometimes they mess with you and put them in the wrong order. I would recommend that you just reorder them so it's more comfortable. Like, let's take a look at these examples. For this one, A is 3. Oh, sorry. I'll put an A on the front there. AX squared plus BX plus C. The next letter, B, is negative 6, and C is 1. Okay? So these trinomials are written with these integer coefficients, usually. They don't have to be, but for factoring, they make them integers, so it's easy. I'll do the last one for you. Even though the variable is a, don't get that confused. It's just 4x squared minus 5x plus 7. So the coefficients a equals 4, b is minus 5, and C is 7. Being able to identify those coefficients is going to help you with your factoring. Okay, so for the second one, A is 1, B is negative 7, and C is 12. Why is A 1? Because it's not written. See how this says 1a squared? And don't get mixed up the fact that he, like, the person that made these notes did this on purpose. Why is he going a squared, 7a? He's just trying to mess with you. The it's the variable squared, the variable, and then no variable for the constant. So don't get mixed up. You know, most of the time it'll look like this. It'll be given like this, where a is 2. What's b? And C is negative 11. Good. So just being able to identify those coefficients, for some people, can be a bit of a battle. So hopefully just master that so we can get on to what actually needs to happen. So let's take a look at this orientation. Look, oh my gosh, what is this? What is this expression? It's just a bunch of rectangles. x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 6x. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 8. Look at the notes. I just want you to think, and, and you can like, you can look here if you'd like, but try not to think about it. Try to think of a way that you could organize those six rectangles such that there was room for those eight units. So you have to think of a way to organize those six x's so there's room to perfectly fit eight units. That's that special relationship between what numbers multiply to eight but also add to six. Because that's what you're doing. You're arranging these rectangles such that you end up with a perfect way to put those eight. So it's nice rectangle. That's what you have to have. Because to be factored, you have to be a rectangle, length times width. So what's special about 4 and 2? They add to and multiply to 8. Okay, so I must put a little, a few notes here, because this page is so important. Okay, so the collecting of like terms, this adds to 6, and then there's enough space that they multiply to 8. And those special numbers are 4 and 2. It's like 4 plus 2, that's 6, and 4 times 2, that's 8. So that's what makes the this possible. If you chose other numbers, 
Like what other what other numbers multiply to eight? Eight and one. Eight and two. But eight and one makes what when you add? You need nine. You need nine of those bars, right? So this could only be factored with eight and one if if the middle term was nine. You could do it with nine x's, but not with six x's. And if you could, if you had five x's, you couldn't do this. This wouldn't even be possible. Like if you had x squared plus five x plus eight, that guy there is not factorable. You couldn't even do that one. Because no product of 8, like 2 times 4 or 8 times 1, there's no way you could add up to 5. So some polynomial expressions are factorable, some aren't. And that's key understanding, because you have to be able to make these rectangles. All right, let's move on. I'm not giving you any homework tonight. We're going to finish off this lesson tomorrow. For the rest of the class, what we're going to do is we're going to just play this game with the numbers. So this is your, this is your B value. This is your C value in this expression. one x squared plus b x plus c. So this is a special case where a is one, the first coefficient is one. So like for the very first row here, the polynomial would be x squared plus 12 x plus 20. And I could factor that one. I could factor that one. I know it's got to be x times x. That'll give me my x squared. Now, what two numbers will multiply to 20, but add to 12? 10 and 2. So this is the proper factorization of that expression. Here's the area. Here's the length times the width. So right now, we're just going to play the game where you have to find these special values. Like the first one is 10 and 2. They add to 12 and they multiply it to 20. So I'll leave the rest of that box for you. Now for the second box, sec first row here, second box. This is where you got to be careful. And you have to really be clever. You multiply to a positive, but you add to a negative. How can you multiply to a positive but add to a negative? The two numbers have to be both negative. This is negative 6 and negative 3. Negative 6 and negative 3, they'll become negative 9 when you add them, but they'll become positive 18 when you multiply them. And I'll do one more for you. What happens if the product is negative? If the product is negative, when you multiply two things and get a negative, that means one of them is positive and the other one is negative. Now you have to think of the numbers. What multiplies to 24 and adds to 2? It's 6 and 4. 6 times 4 is 24. And I chose them such that the positive 6 is bigger than the negative 4 so that it ends up as a positive 2 rather than a negative 2. Your homework is to fill this these two charts. That's it. So no real textbook homework. That's your job for the rest of today and tonight. <laughs>